Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Craig here again with a, a uh, <coughs> excuse me, with a kit review. As you can tell, my flu, my voice. I've uh, got man flu, unfortunately, but uh, <coughs> we'll be okay. Right. So this kit here, this was uh, a present from my good friend Steve Mottram. Um, totally shocked when he said I bought you this. As I was after it myself, as mentioned, I was thinking I'm not getting it. And then he sends me a message saying, don't get it, I've already got it for you. So what can you say apart from, thank you Steve. Much appreciated. So as you can see, it's a trumpeter kit 135 and it's Russian. Again, I do like my Russian stuff and it's the Soviet S51 self-propelled gun. It's a trumpeter kit and it says the length is 259mm, the width is 95mm and there's 520 plus parts. And I guess it's trumpeter obviously. And the kit number is 5583, and it's obviously 135 scale. Nice box art on the front, Let's use that line out the way. Bit of unusual, so I think it's basically a KV hull. By looking at them wheels, one, two, three, four, five. I think it's slightly extended. I can't remember, it's five or six wheels the KV has. Let's have a look. One, two, three. No, it's six. Yeah, it's the same KV. Yeah. So. I don't think there's any figures with it. So we'll have a look on the side of the box and we just have the usual a bit of reading if you want to uh, pause that. Let's get that in there. Yeah, build the KV1 chassis. There we go. On the rear, also on the sides, it's the same picture. And on the side we have a Sort of colour call out of the finished vehicle, a bit of PE there it's telling you it's got. And then the usual thing there is not a toy, blah blah blah. And there again there's the kit number. So without further ado, let's open the box and let's see what we've got inside. And the trump of the boxes are quite sturdy. And sometimes difficult to bloody lead off like this one's going to be. It will be good, not it? Come on. Can't get the it off. Hang on. <laughs> there we are. Let me neck, I took a bit of getting into. Right. So we'll leave the instructions till last. And we'll go through each sprue. There's quite a bit of plastic in there. Let me just move this out the way, if I can, pop all of that, I've got that much crap on my bench, I've no bloody room for anything else at the moment, which is unfortunate, right. I've got the camera there, so let's have a look with the first sprue what we've got. Podium organised as normal. There we go. Oh, oh, I see the two bags there. Uh, presumably, by looking at this, looks like a bit of the uh, the main gun. I like this. I do work. I do like working in grey plastic, as I mentioned a few times before, and uh, it's nice, nicely detailed. Even the snow flash. Really, really nice. I'm saying, presumably, it's part from the. Uh, I think that's the gun shield as well. That. And the detail is quite nice on there again. They've got a few little bits and pieces. And again, I think that's part of the gun mount. I presume these are. Obviously, that's the uh, the rear of the tank. Sorry, assault gun. That tank. A bit of fender or something there. So, yeah, it's the first one's out the way. It's pretty decent. There's no trumpeter kits usually are. Especially the newer ones. I've never seen any problem with those. Maybe some of their older kits, maybe, yeah. But uh, not so much now. And this looks like uh, more gun stuff. Looks like the breech and the gun itself. It's in two parts. But fairly easy to get the seam out of that. Shouldn't be a problem. And a couple of actual shells as well there. 
and again it's all nicely detailed again it really is so there's the uh, let's turn around the way we've got the shells a couple of shells and the part of the breech and then the main gun there looks like the breech detail again where the, where the year uh, the shell goes in a few other little bits and pieces there's the as you can see there's nothing, there's nice detail on there again part of the mechanism for uh, the up and down presumably there's a seam line in them shells but there again you, you know a few wisps of a flat of a uh, good sander and it will disappear so there's nothing wrong with that and so they, they, it's, you can feel the quality, it is quality plastic, it isn't cheap plastic at all really nice and there again like I say there's no no ugly injection marks apart from where they should be and in the rear of these things that you're never going to see once they're together hmm nice right looks like we have the uh, the length of the main hull and the sponsons for the side yeah, it's, fair, it's a fairly large vehicle as you can see a lot of the work is actually done on the back there but it's really nicely done especially the engine grills there and all the little rivets and there's a bit of a is it cast texture which isn't too sure but there again really nicely done and there we have probably where the gun goes and everything else and then we have the sponsons which they're nicely detailed again we've got a couple of grab handles there which I might take off and uh, Put me all on, we shall see when we get to do the build. And I'll just turn that around there, that's better. Yeah, and there's the, uh, I think it's part of the uh, glacier's plate there, part of it. Yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a lengthy tank, a salt gun, sorry. Quite, uh, it's the size of a KV, slightly longer than a KV1. Um, we've got that extended part with the uh, the, with them with obviously for the uh, main gun the gun and a lot of bits and pieces that hang over the back and then we have the low hull and we have a piece of the clear clear sprue for the uh, the lights which are quite nicely done again I won't take it out of the bag Let's turn it the right way and see better there we go front light and reverse I would say that's probably a convoy light part of it not too sure there again, a bit of clear clear spray, which is quite nice to you to have in a bit of an armor kit. And then we have the main tub. Pretty plain, but we have the sides the sides to go on top of that. Which I'll show you shortly when we get to it. So fairly plain underneath. It's got a bit of detail. It's all nicely done. All nicely done. Nice weld seam there. That's really, really nice that. It's a pity that's on the bottom. That well seen. What if it continues on the uh, other player? But that is a really nice well seen, isn't it? it? Really is. It's a shame you're not going to see it. Yeah, so that's the main. That's the main tub. And then we have uh, Lincoln length tracks. I've never actually built a uh, any armor vehicle with link and length tracks ever before so this is probably the first I'm sure we'll have a look at them first well, yeah there's a couple of sink or sink marks on there but they're, they're risen so we will be able to take all them off no problem they're all risen by the looks of it, so they'll come off with a file or a nice sander, which just shouldn't be a problem. On the other side, we have the built in sag, which is always nice. Same again, got to clean them off. Uh, and the, underneath, the detail is really nice, the tracks themselves are really, really nice. See, I did them KV tracks that I've already got for my KV8, um, is it KV? Yeah, KV8S. So I might, you know, I might even buy another set for this. We shall see. If I can get them as cheap as a cheap again as I got them last time. But these aren't too bad. Must admit, they're not too bad. 
I'll decide when I'm, you know, I'll probably clean up and see if it comes off easy enough. Individual links are fine, there's no uh, injection marks on them, it's just the, link, the, the length parts. That's all. But there shouldn't be too much to get that out of there. After all, we are modellers, we don't want things too easy, do we? Otherwise, it'll be just a waste of time buying a kit and well, now and again it's nice to build a nice easy kit, but you know, you've got to test yourselves, haven't you? Then this looks like more of the uh, the gun assembly. Yeah, look at the nice detail on those. That's part of the obviously the uh, the gun mounting too. Nice detail on the rivets. And again on each side of those. Obviously inside and outside. There's a couple of fine pieces there. Engine, uh, sorry, like hatches. What's on the other side of the hatches? Yeah. I don't know if they're hatches. No, they're not hatches. I don't know what they are. There'll be some sort of. I'm not sure. Put some kind of hatch because they look. Oh, I like the. Uh, the little clasps on the end there, that's a really nice touch. They're really, really nice. And clasps on there. That's really quite nice. And then we have some fine stuff underneath here. Let's have a go. I don't want to take it off in case it uh, damages anything. So we can get it into there. Got some nice fine detailing work in there, some small pieces. It's nice to see that Tumper to do this. If you know. Not every manufacturer that does this. It's a nice, it's a nice idea. It keeps you, you know, 99% of the time keeps your uh, fine parts intact. Nice right, some carrots. There's quite a bit of plastic, and this looks like more the uh, upper hull, like the guards on the uh, side of the uh, sponsons. What's that bit there? Useless. And then again, even the small fine details are really nice. The uh, they should clean up really nicely. Yep, all the injection marks are hidden away again where they should be. Don't ask me what these parts are. I haven't got a clue, but they're part of the uh, the upper hull. And these small fine long pieces here. You have to be careful when you take them off the sprue to clean up. But there, like a handle, the bars that go right along the end for the uh, for the upper hull. Don't know what these little bits are. But they're all nicely, all nicely moulded, yeah, and really nice, nice plastic. So I'm getting to the point where I do like making my own handles now. So we shall see. It's quite nice, but some of them are a bit. A bit flat, if you know what I mean. So I might just sort of have them so they aren't completely flat against the surface of the hull. Uh, I might just sort of have them so they haven't yeah, quite clasped together. All you need is copper wire or jewellers wire, and away you go. They're not easy, hard to make. Right, more small fine details, presumably for the upper hull as well. There again. No flash. Oh, a small part there. Look at that little titchy thing there where my thumb is. Finger is. I don't know what they are, but uh, that's minute. And there again, see, there's no flash. Everything's nicely more Obviously, you've got the in injection marks there, but that's on the inside. And there's the outside of it that you need. Uh, the handle's obviously for the. Uh, Traverse notes here, the up and down depression of the gun. And again, pry bars by the looks of them, I'd be wrong. There's two sprues like that. So, one would presume that they would be, let's say, for the, uh, for the main gun. There's a couple of more bits of plastic. This side, this is the you know, I was saying about the main tub. We have this to put onto the side of the spawn, uh, the uh, side of the, uh, the tub. A little bit of detail, and there again, all nicely done. Yep, yeah, can't complain at that. 
and he's going to the uh, on the sides of the uh, lower tub all nicely detailed it really is nicely detailed actually the bolt heads are quite nice they're nicely risen up we'll stick a nice wash over them eventually or water whatever you whatever you decide you do yeah so that's nice and then we get to the uh, we'll start off with the wheels first. Typical KV1 wheels, nothing special. These are quite nicely more with three sprues the same. I have to say, probably one of the best KV1 wheels I've seen. They're really, really nice. And the keyed as well, which is good. Really nice. Nothing wrong with those. Look at the detail on those at the front. You get the hubs on the front with the little uh, nuts or bolts, or you want to call them. But they're really nice, even on the insides. You know, can't argue with that. Well, you're not going to see the insides, but at least the detail is there. So there's three sprues like that. And then the final large plastic sprue we have is. Uh, Sprockets, return rollers, fuel cans, fuel drums I should say. Two sprues the same. Yep. Let's have a gander. W8 says on here. Yep. Sprockets, fuel drums, return wheel, uh, shackles. Par for the uh, running gear, and you've got your swing arms and your return rollers on the top, and hubs and other bits and pieces. There's two of these, so you've got the detail that's on the inside of the sprocket, again, which is really nicely detailed again. Nothing wrong with that, and they're keyed again. You can see the key, also looks on the inside, and that's on the outside. Again, nicely detailed, and then we have the like big hub that goes in the centre of the uh, sprocket again nicely detailed as you can see they're all flash free obviously you've got the little where the injection goes in the sprue cart and the sprue gate but that's nothing difficult to take out and they're the return rollers there and that's on the, that's on the inside and the outside are like so nicely detailed again and there's the uh, spindles for the return rollers to go onto the outside of the uh, main tub. Brackets for the sponsons. Uh, fuel drums. So the nicely fuel drums as well. I come with to do the uh, solid ends, and then you just get to put them together. But I'm unsure if these would be needed. Uh, I think these are probably just off the KV itself. If you know what I mean? It's probably the KV. Does it say? Just says W A where all the rest of them said it was the um, W. What is it? It says all the rest of them. Yeah, let's see. yeah, yeah. Let's see. let's go back to a main sprue. I know it's for the uh, main gun. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's all right. So they've got the. Uh, the main for the gun itself saying what it is which is the uh, S51 and then wheels and this it's just got WA and it's so, so these must be like a gin uh, gen the genetic genetic for the uh, KV series but they're still they're nicely detailed which is the main thing and if the uh, field ground field drums aren't Use on this kit, I'm sure they'll be used somewhere along the line. And then we have minute decals, just a Soviet S51 self propelled gun, a couple of numbers, and a couple of guards' army. I think they had to do with the guards' army, I'm 100% sure, but that's all that is. I don't think there's actually any decals for this kit. I'm going to look at the uh, destructions before. And then we have photo, we have, yeah, nice piece of PE, and we'll take it out. I think these are for the ladders at the back. I think they're ladders. I'm too sure, and there's part for the engine grills. And we have two kinds of thread. 
one there. We have a thicker one, which is probably going to be the tow cable, and there's some smaller ones there as well. I'm not sure what they're for here. But yeah, is it uh, what day did it say? Uh, S51 2013. So it you know it's six years old, so it's not it's not really old, but it's old enough. Right, let's get to the destructions and the usual typical trumpeter stuff. You know, there's no there's no information about the gun that's on the side of the box, just giving you a quick look at the picture was on the side, and then with the icons to telling you what to do, what not to do. Before we go any further, I'll do like trumpeter. They always give you the colour call out and say it's just Russian green. And by looking at it, just two colours, you've got Russian green and me metal black. For Vallejo, Mr. Hobby, Model Master, that's it really. But, uh, it doesn't say anything about any decals. Uh, it does give you a lot of more scope, doesn't it, when you get an actual picture, a colour picture of what it's supposed to be looking like. That's a look. So get a chair over there. That's not too bad. And you see all the gun is massively mounted right at the front. You'd think it'd be so, you know, sort of front heavy, wouldn't you? So there must be some weight in the back. There's some things at the back, look like a ladder. I don't know if they're to load, few, uh, load the uh, ammunition up, I'm 100% sure, I'll have to have a look into it. And there's the, the uh, rails along the side which I was on about. So it's quite long, long with the gun being on the uh, right forward, so that's why you've got quite a long length. Right, let's go on the instructions then. As you normal, Trumpeter got the, color, uh, the um, sprue map. Again, telling you what, so we have a piece of thread. Uh, rope and rope. One is uh, 0.6 and one is the bigger one is 1.0 for the um, tow cable 150 millimeters and the 0.6 we have to do two 500 millimeters. Yep. Unused parts. Let's have a look. See if I was right about the fuel cans. Yep. Yeah, they're not going to be used, so I was right about that. Then we start off straight into the. Uh, Lower hull, the ones are there, front onto there, sides on, and then that's straight onto the top and put the top on as well. And then we're starting onto the uh, running gear. Well, fairly simple start. I think most of the work will be probably be involved with the gun. And then we're starting to put the. Uh, there we go, let's just twist it down there. That's it. We're starting off with the uh, swing arms. That's a bit of that's the photo wetter we saw before that goes underneath for the engine. Because you're not going to see, but it's, you won't know it's there. And then we've got the arms to go on, the uh, parts of the, to go inside the arms to finish them off. And then we've got these parts here, which was on about for the return rollers. And then we're starting to assemble the. Uh, for the is that for the. That's for the return wheel, which is on the front. And then we have one for the uh, final drive at the back of the cog, the sprocket. The engine drives at the back. And then we're telling you to make uh, make 12, 12 of the wheels, make two of the sprockets. And then we start to assemble a bit more upper hull as the exhausts. The plate with a looks like hatch, the wheels going on. I won't put, I'll put them on, but they won't glue them on if you know what I mean. And there's those, you know, they're telling you about the uh, when you come down away. The return wheel there, make two of those, obviously. And then we start on the tracks, which I probably won't do at that time, but I may, I may put them on and get the shape, and then they'll be sprayed and, and weathered off the tank. If at all possible, I'm trying to do that, I like to do that better, so I'm not sure I'm getting them all in. Just follow that, that should be fairly straightforward. Get the mix, make sure they're set up and leave that one last link off, and then uh, be able to pull them off. Because obviously, when we get to this part, it's telling you to put the sponsons on top, so I won't be attaching those. I'll build things up around it, but I won't put them on because obviously the track lower hole won't be done by then. 
but it could be one of these kits that has to the low the track has to be done and finished and the low hole has to be done but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it we'll see more upper hull stuff there we go there's parts of the uh, gun assembly I think I don't know what they are with a light on the front I'm sure they are with them again at the back little torques there or lifting eyes I'm nearly starting <coughs> excuse me starting with probably the gun again more of the gun them on, I, I don't know whether like a traversing ro uh, roller thing going along there for the gun to come back and forward the recoil, that's what I'm trying to think of, which is a possibility. And there's that sub build again where you've got the, oh yeah, sorry, there's a bracket again, some more little bits, P in there again, and some more little bits and pieces. And these are these are what you call ladders, see the P parts there that make the ladders as well. Up each side of that and then they're fitted to the rear as well like for the shell cradles by looking at them the ladders possibly the shell cradle we shall see and then more of the uh, hand rails again interesting to see where them shells actually go it's, uh, with the kit which we will show us eventually and then it's saying about the tow cable the back and there's the top then that's the north point that's the one millimeter that's the one millimeter one so we'll need two of those and there's a guard the guard rails again full length and there's the uh tow cable is that a diff slightly different uh way of doing them there they're actually quite chunky them aren't they and then we have the shackles which is not glued on the into the uh, bottom of the uh, lower hull. So they don't look too bad to put on. Yeah, not so fastened onto those little. Well, I thought they were lifting eyes. Where are we at? All those little ones there, which I thought were lifting eyes. Obviously, that's where the uh, shackle fastens to for the cable. Yeah, we're starting to, you know, starting to get this main gun done, the lower part of it. And then we're starting to assemble the main barrel. Again, it's two piece, but it's it's not going to make too much difference to get that out of there. And then we've put a photo etch there, so it could be rifled. Put in the ammo too sure, We'll have to have a look. There's a PE part to go in the end of the uh, in the end of the barrel, and then we can connect part of the breech to the gun. And then we're starting to do the working mechanisms. You know the lifting. You know the for the height and depression of the gun, other bits and pieces, very straightforward, nothing overtaxing in that. And again, again, more bits and pieces. Again, all attached, and there's the actual breech itself, which is a sub assembly because there's the parts at the bottom. Again, I wonder if you could leave that breech, will it, will it slide open or swing open? We'll have to have a look at that when we get to build that part. Possibly not. So you've got the little arrows in directions telling you which way you have to go from there to there and then from there so to there and then right around, just following you around basically. Right, so next part. Are we on there? Nine, nine. Yeah, and um, again we're starting off with the uh, half of the gun as well and uh, everything else on the gun and the height and there's the wheels and things like that the adjustments on the gun both sides quite a level there again those little arrows again pointing in the direction which way you should be working from you know round again there's some wheels that I was on about looks like a rope ah, I see what that little rope was so it goes round there I see, so there must be a, aha, there they go, that's what the other rope is for, One, the 0.6mm rope, like, a, like a, a tow, like a tow hitch or something, cable, whatever you want to call it, some more mechanism for the, uh, the gun, and again, 
that's in there the earth finished off there to the rear of the to the rear of the rear of the salt gun yeah so it must be like a I don't know what you'd use them for I'll have to find that out and that's to uh, if it gets stuck to tow itself out fasten it somewhere and pulls itself out or wherever it's going to I don't know. and then we've signed the final assembly of the actual gun itself into the cradle that's a word I was looking for before and there's the part of the uh, all goes together fairly simple it was quite le nicely detailed you know, the sub assemblies on the side again which I do like the sub assemblies uh, showing you on the actual part where it's going to go and then the final part is actually uh, mounting the gun to the uh, lower hull so the upper hull so I don't know where the shells go I'll have to look at that I must have missed that bit unless they're parts that you don't use I would have thought so with being an uh, assault gun you know the shells somewhere yeah and then obviously that was right the first three we pulled out of the guards on the front so it's quite a nice detailed kit by looking at it plenty of uh, scope for a good decent dio with it or a standalone piece itself so I'll have to read into it and find out exactly what all these parts are from and what they're used for so much to look forward to tonight one on them uh, online so yeah so that's a brilliant kit for Mr Mottram really top top guy top man top man indeed so when I get round to that I don't know when but things are taking a longer to do than uh, they used to be I've slowed down quite a lot but uh, the whippet's coming along I'll be doing a bit more of that today the uh, it's mainly the dio now so I'll, I'll be doing an update on that as well today so well that's it thank you very very much for all my subscribers new and old and uh, thanks for tuning in and watching this unboxing i hope you're all having a pleasant weekend and uh, get plenty of good time at the bench so we'll see you soon so this is greg signing off and we'll catch you very very soon